Hey guys, Wave618 here. I hope you're all doing very well. It's been a while since my last video. Obviously, we've just been waiting for Bitcoin to make its move and uh, we are due an update on Bitcoin as well. But I wanted to throw out this video on the general stock markets, in particular looking at the Dow, um, just because I think it's hugely important and it will have an impact across all markets, uh, in particular crypto. Uh, which we'll address in a later video, but uh, yeah, I really want to show you my thoughts because it's uh, it's absolutely huge. Uh, the um, well, my findings here. Um, I know a lot of people talk about this recession being the big one, the great reset. People often talk about it as, um, as you know, if you've been following me for a few years now, you will know I've been calling for you know this major market top for a while. In fact. I thought the pandemic may have uh, triggered this massive sell-off. Of course, it did cause a big sell-off, but not to the extent that I thought was possible. Um, you know, the stimulus packages really saved the market back then. And uh, yeah, I did not expect that. That was unprecedented. The degree of the stimulus provided was unbelievable. And of course, that is causing a lot of the problems right now with the inflation that we face. But uh, yeah, let's just, before we dive into the fundamentals, I want to focus a little bit on technicals. So the, the main reason for my concern with regards to the stock markets is because of how overbought they are. Uh, so we're very high within the trend, as you can see here, looking at the pitchfork. We'll just, let's just focus on Elliott Wave for a moment. Elliott Wave and pitchforks are the mainstay of my technical analysis. So I've always been looking at this as a, a wave one, wave two. So this is just following the Great Depression back in 1929. And then we, we triggered the upward move round in 1932. So don't forget 1932 through to 2022, that is a 90 year move. Okay, and I, I, I am of the opinion that that move this whole leg up here has completed. I can see a nice five wave move within it. So just to highlight that, so I'm looking at that as a wave one and wave two. We then cruise up to the wave three here. And then we have our, this is what people often refer to as the stagflation period through the 60s and 70s. Markets not really moving much at all. Uh, so I have wave four finishing here. And then we go into our final fifth leg, which you can see I've broken down further into a wave one, two, three so this is your dot com bubble here finishing your wave three and then we go into a, a complicated expanded flat wave four so first leg down b wave up c wave down into your median line of this major pitchfork that we're looking at okay but then we obviously absolutely rally incredibly hard all the way to this point here we can zoom in for this bit so if we just zoom in here so but probably better on the weekly if we pull up the weekly. So here again, I'm looking at a five wave completion here. So um, I was looking at a wave one, two, three to this point here. And then as I say, there was the argument for a wave five completion at this point and then the sell off with the, the COVID pandemic here in 2020. But it turned out to be a complex megaphone pattern expanding triangle type wave four. Yeah, so following this complex wave four, we've then rallied again. And don't underestimate this rally right here. You know, on the log scale, it's it's downplayed. This is a move from 18K to 36K. Basically, we doubled the value of the entire history, the entire 240 year history of the US stock market in a couple of years. And that those couple of years were during a pandemic. It is absolutely I just cannot get my head around it. Okay, I can't. I don't. I don't have any words to describe how ridiculous that is. Okay, and it can only be justified by the amount of stimulus that was provided. And that obviously must have just all poured into the stock market. That's basically where the money went. Um, so, yeah, absolutely incredible moves. Um, but yeah, I see this as a terminal wave five. Now, the only argument that would suggest that this isn't the end is that if this pullback here is part of this move up but you can see the extent to which it's pulled back is much greater than any degree of the you know the subwave count so it's just completely out proportion for me it suggests that this from here to finish sorry from here to here that's a completed wave right there there's no way this is a subwave within this yeah unless you're saying this is wave one 
wave two, three, four, five going up higher, but there's no, absolutely no way that could play out. Now, I was of the opinion that maybe we come up and test this upper warning line once more of this um, large pitchfork. But as I say, that does not need to happen. Quite typically, the wave three will finish higher up within the pitchfork than the wave five, which we can see here. Let's zoom out and see. We can see the full pitchfork and see how it was drawn up. So this, by the way, is a shift pitchfork. First pivot at the bottom of our Great Depression. Second pivot is at the top of the first move up. Third pivot at the bottom of the next move down. As I say, shift pitchfork, you have to be on the log scale to draw this. And you can see how nicely the pitchfork has been respected. So... As I say, for the wave three, quite characteristically, you come in right very close to the upper warning line. Very nice test of the median line where we find support. And then we've pushed into the 1.5 line. This line here is the 1.5 line. So I know people have queries what these lines represent. So you go on the settings look uh, to set your standard deviations. So this is obviously a median line. This is your upper warning line, lower warning line. These are two standard deviations away. The lower median line is represented by the thick blue line and the upper median line as such. These are one standard deviation away, and this is the 0 0.5 standard deviation. This is the 1.5, and it's the same on the other side. So, as you can see, it looks like just a small pullback so far here on the log scale, but in fact, uh, linear scale, let's look at it as such. This is if we take our percentage retracement tool. So we retraced almost 20%, so yeah, 18%. It's a huge, huge pullback, almost a fifth of the whole stock market value has been wiped off but obviously on the log scale it's it's downplayed because price action gets squashed as you get higher up within the price so yeah don't under underestimate the degree of the sell-off this when you look at it makes gives you the impression that we could just continue rallying here it's just a small pullback but in fact it's very substantial and we'll home in on the nasdaq and SP where we can really appreciate this leg from the post-financial crisis upwards we'll be able to appreciate it a lot better now we cannot forget that this is a five wave move all the way back from 1932. This is a five wave count completion is what I'm I'm fairly confident at this moment. Of course, not you can never be 100 percent. But I do think that looking at the technicals and fundamentals, this is what we're dealing with. So you've got to have a pullback that is an appropriate degree. So you, it's got to be, you know, a, a very large pullback, you know, and it's got to last a, a good while. Now, as we know, pullbacks or movements to the downside on the stock market generally occur very fast. They can be very steep. And so I'm expecting this move down. I expect it to play out like a, an ABC zigzag. So we're looking at the A so an impulsive move down to make the A. So we're looking at a 535. Five. So five waves down to make the A, three waves up to make the B, C wave down uh, again in an impulsive fashion to make the final leg for the zigzag. So that, that's the, the play that I think makes most sense. Uh, I expect this move down to probably last a couple of years. Yeah, I think most of the time will be spent in the B wave. This could last in excess of 10 years. And then there'll be some other event way too hard to predict just now but i think this will stimulate the uh, the c wave which will take out the lows of the a wave okay so this is the way i think we're likely to play it out um as i say i think it will happen very fast now the thing that concerns me about this weakness within the economy this recession that ever you know even you know the the major banks have been speaking about admittedly uh, the thing that concerns me is that I don't know how we can get out of it, not only with monetary uh, policy, but I don't know how you can even get investor confidence back. I really don't. There's so many things. There's only ha so, m so many ways that a hedge fund can blag that the stock market is going to recover so that people start investing in their fund once more. There's only so much you can say, but I mean, you've got you got incredible inflation. You've got interest rates, obviously, there to, to counterbalance that. Um, you've got a record uh, sovereign debt, record uh, household debt. You've got record corporation debt. You know, all of these things. And then you've, you're, your interest rates are at zero. So you've literally got nothing. Even if you wanted to put interest rates uh, down, you couldn't do it because of inflation. So... You, you're really stuck, you know, we've really maxed out monetary policy. 
Uh, I really don't see any other kind of way of manipulating the market to make it go higher. And that's why I think it's going to have a natural correction. It's going to last a lot longer than we think. And the only thing I can think that would cause a turnaround back to the upside is people thinking this is too oversold. It's only at that point when it's people think it's too oversold that they can't possibly be any more further downside or the downside to upside ratio has been completely wiped out so people think okay this might be a good time for a long-term investment um, and i think that's what will trigger the b wave but probably also it will need to be a change in presidency i think that's another thing that will kind of stimulate that kind of um boost in confidence and um who knows? I don't want to make this political or anything, but obviously uh, 2024 US election and no doubt Donald Trump will be a candidate once more. I, I'm just wondering whether that might get people's morale back up, you know, or, or at least the, the those that are investing in the stock markets. Who knows? Who knows? But that's one hypothesis out there. But I think probably someone who can <clears throat> make pr drastic promises, whether those promises come true or not, we don't know. But I think that is kind of a potential stimulus point. So what I'm trying to suggest is what I see is a downward move potentially over the next couple of years into 2024, November 2024, pretty fast, pretty deep. And as I say, I'm looking at to test these this high here. So very interestingly here, we will just zoom in. So basically, uh, let's go on the linear scale to appreciate this. So first of all, just looking at the linear scale, you can appreciate it's a bubble, okay? People that talk about housing bubbles, they talk about cryptocurrency bubbles, no one talks about a stock market bubble, okay? This has gone on from the beginning of time. You've really got to appreciate it. Look at this move from post-pandemic all the way up to the top. It doubled its value in a couple of years, okay? Absolutely ridiculous, okay? So the, the beta on this chart is absolutely incredible. And so you can expect an appropriate pullback, you know, a very large degree pullback. So, yeah, um, if we look at a fib retracement, so pretty much from zero, because that's pretty much where our Great Depression brought us down to. So let's just go all the way. Well, in fact, let's go on the log scale and do it. So from we're going from here to the top. Uh, let me, sorry, let me get the fib retracement tool on. So all the way from down there to here. So this is on the log scale. Now let's go on the linear. Okay, so linear, as you can see, 61.8% Fib retracement takes out your pandemic lows, um, brings it down to 61.8, and it's absolutely perfect confluence with the 2007 high. This was prior to your financial crisis. And this is where I think we're going to have a really strong move down to. Yeah, as I say, I think this is just going to be an impulsive A wave. Then we get our B, then we get our C. This is just a hypothetical count. The B could be higher than the origin of A. You know, it could be a running flat, expanded flat. Who knows? OK, I'm only focusing on one leg right now. I think it's pointless trying to predict what's going to happen um, 10 years down the line when you don't know how the fundamentals are going to look. So but for now, I see this as being very steep, a very steep sell off. I'm very concerned about, you know, all the fundamentals within the charts. I really, as I say, I really can't see what is going to turn this market around. Um, you, you can't use any more stimulus. That's the concern. So this is down at 14K here on the Dow Jones. All right. So just wanted to point that out there. The, this is what I think may happen. Obviously, if things change, I'll point that out. Uh, but for now, this is the extent to which I think this sell off will be. I don't think people I think people underestimate how big of a correction could be playing out here. Um, so with that said, I just want to pull up the, the S&P uh, on the log scale and we can look at this on the weekly. So here we can we're, I want to focus on the post financial crisis move. So this is the final five waves up when we were looking at the Dow Jones. So I've got a pitch work just monitoring this move up. So obviously we haven't broken the lower warning line yet. So you could argue we're just going this is a temporary pullback. Maybe we bounce off the median line, the lower median line, lower warning line even and continue pushing higher. Of course, it's possible. But as I say, I see this as a final leg in this five wave move. So a one, two, three. You know, this has to be a way for this. The complexity of this move, this expanding megaphone uh, triangle pattern here 
has to be a wave four. It fits in very nicely, which means the subsequent price action is a wave five. And when that wave five corrects, that means we've finished our whole five wave move up from down here. So this is the concern I have. Um, I don't think this is a sub wave count within this move. You know, I don't see it as a, like a one, two, three, four, because the four would be way too long relative to the wave two. Um, and I don't see it as a one, two, three, four, five, suggesting we're going up for another five or 10 years. You know, we are well overdue a recession. The fundamentals are horrendous. I think this is the start of a major pullback. Of course, we don't have confirmation of that until we clear this lower warning line. But you'll see in a moment when we look at the NASDAQ, it's even more concerning. So this is the S&P 500. Now let me throw out the NASDAQ. Um, so NASDAQ, let's look at this. So similar pitchforks are again post financial crisis, first, second, third pivots, shift pitchfork, log uh, scale. And you can see we stayed within the pitchfork really nicely. Okay, a few blips here and here. And then we've kept coming to the upper warning line. Let's zoom in so we can see it a bit clearer. Okay, we've come to the upper warning line. Now we're literally at this very second testing the lower warning line. So if it is going to bounce, it needs to do it now. It literally needs to do it now. It is make or break because once this breaks, okay, you could argue it could come down a little bit beneath the lower warning line because it's bounced previously from just beneath the lower warning line. But I would be deeply concerned because I do consider this pitchfork to have held the price action pretty nicely considering we're looking at this over the last 13 years, okay, all the way uh, or even 14 years, 2008 through to 2022. OK, held the price action really nicely. So any break of that lower warning line is deeply concerning, in my opinion. At the moment, we're following the smaller pitch to the downside. We can have a look at that on the daily. So as you can see, I've got this original pitch walk. So it's a steep gradient suggestive of a very um, aggressive sell off. First, second, third pivots here. Uh, again, log scale. And we're just hovering around the lower median line, which you can see we've tested many, many times. So we've had today a little bit of a bounce, but as you can see, I think that is just because we've got confluence with hitting the lower warning line, the lower median line of the smaller pitchfork, and it'll do very well if it can get above the median line. But ultimately, I, as I say, I'm very concerned that this is going to be a much bigger rollover. So these are your main US indices. We can throw out the Russell uh, 2000 index also. So the pitchfork here isn't as good, I'd say. So on the weekly, it's probably easier to see. So here, Again, post financial crisis starting in 2009. First pivot, second, third shift pitch for log scale. Um, again, quite a big blip of uh, you know as we undershoot the uh, the lower warning line here. Hence why I'm not as a bigger of a fan of this pitchfork. But again, you can see we've ran up into the median line, selling off, and again we're sitting at that lower warning line point. Uh, interestingly, you can see as we move down, we're just retesting these consolidation blocks. You can see price kind of got stuck within this block for a good amount of time. When we broke it to the downside, we we all we did was retest the, the bottom of this uh, block here. Again, when we we formed a, a new price action block, when we broke out beneath it, where was the retest? It was just the bottom of the block. So that's the kind of thing that's playing out here. We're getting a series of lower highs, lower lows, just testing previous consolidation levels. And again, we're coming into that lower warning line. So I think stocks are clinging on as we speak. Uh, but ultimately, just because of all the fundamentals out there, I I, I mean, I, I've been proved wrong before when we had the pandemic and we somehow bounced back. I don't see, I really don't see how we can bounce back this time. I don't see how monetary policy can save anything when you've got inflation so high. Um, so Maybe I'm overlooking some of it. Do let me know. Post your comments in the video if you think this is massive oversight. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. But um, yeah, I am generally deeply concerned. But these are all the major US indices. We can, I do like to have a look at uh, real estate also. So this is an interesting chart. I look at IYR. So it's a uh, ETF that I think is very useful and representative with a lot of data going back. Uh, so very good for assessing the uh, general investor sentiment within the housing market. So here we are on the log scale. So sorry, there's a few annotations that might obscure the chart. But basically, I'm looking at a large ABC. That was a huge, aggressive, impulsive sell off. So I'm looking at it as an A, mainly because the fact that the subsequent move up that went higher and took out these highs, it looks so corrective going higher. There's no way this is impulsive going up. So I'm looking at this as a very large 
corrected pattern. So we've got the A, a B, and a C. Yeah, and obviously that would suggest a running flat if we come down to here. If the C was to take out the A, then we're looking at an expanded flat. But at least the running flat play out is what I'm suggesting is going to happen here. Uh, and we've actually got some fib set up here. If we go on the linear scale, we can see it. So we had, if you put a fib retracement tool from this high to this low, don't forget you have to be on the linear scale. Basically, this high comes up to the 1.236, which we can see if we zoom in here. Here's your 1.236 line. We hit it very nicely. So that's a, when you get these running flats, that's a common fib level to tag. You can see we do slightly overshoot it on one week here, but ultimately you can see we got the shoulders, left shoulder, right shoulder, all coming up to this 1.236 level. Okay, so that's how I'm looking at stock, uh, sorry, real estate at present. Uh, and obviously one of the biggest concerns is obviously uh, the bond market, which could have potentially triggered all of this major sell-off altogether. Um, let me just try and find, I think, this one. Let's go on the daily. In fact, let's go on the weekly. So here you can see these are your 20-year your treasuries. Um, so obviously a clear bull market within bonds going on for a, a long, long period. But that does seem to be correcting now, and it's a very aggressive sell-off. We're following an original pitchfork to the downside here. First, second, third pivots, log scale. Um, so, yeah, deeply concerning here for bonds. And, uh, yeah, I don't see it getting better anytime soon. As I speak, we are inverting the yield curve again as two-year bonds go above um, the yields of 10-year bonds. It's obviously a massive inconsistency that can't be sustained and often uh, precedes a massive recession. Um, so another major concern, but this is, uh, so the other thing to look at is the VIX always worth looking at. So here on the VIX, I've been looking at the, let's look at it. Yeah. We're on the linear scale, uh, zoom in. So basically just a classic pattern I see repeating, you know, so we get these wedge light structures here on the VIX. Yeah. I've drawn them out with these, uh, trend lines. And when you start to break them, we don't usually get another low. Yeah. And what happens is we get this huge spike eventually. Okay, so here's your wedge, we break out, no more lows, and then we get the huge spike. Here the wedge was broken, uh, massive breakout, wedge was broken here, massive breakout. Now we're seeing exactly the same thing. Here's your wedge, here's your breakout, no more lower lows, these are a series of higher lows. And I see this abs just doing another one of these basically as we saw before. So don't forget, if you're not unsure about what the VIX is, it's the fear index for the S&P 500. Generally, as you see the S&P 500 coming down, the VIX will go higher. It's basically uh, inverse to what you'd expect on the S&P 500. As I say, it's the fear index. So a spike suggests fear, which coincides with um, downward price action in the S&P 500. So as you can see, as this is trending higher, which we've broken out of this kind of block. You can see this is essentially representative of a block of fear. And you can see that fear is building up. And once it breaks above it, that's where it will eventually erupt. And so another reason for why I'm anticipating a huge, huge drastic sell-off in stocks. Um, so those are all the things I'd like to put out there. I think I've mentioned things from a technical as well as fundamental point of view. Obviously, I'd be very interested to see your arguments for or against what I'm saying here. Maybe you think it's uh, way too big a sell-off. Maybe you think it's um, way too pessimistic. I don't know. I try and be real with the, what I see in the charts. Uh, I'm not one of those that will just tell you everything's going up so that you know more people follow the channel as that might be what you want to hear. I will tell it as it is. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, do let me know if you disagree. I'll be uh, very keen to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. Take care.